In question 5, we've got trigonometry to part A for 2 marks. 1 says to sketch the graph of y equals 4 cos x and y equals 2 sin x. 4x greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 180 on the same axis. Okay, so what the numbers are doing is stretching the functions vertically. So cos of x usually sits on the y-axis at 1. 4 cos x is going to be up at 4. Now it doesn't change our x-intercepts at all. So that would be 90. That would be 180. So, let's say that's y is 4 cos x. And then uh, 2 sine of x uh, is still going to hit the y-axis at 0. The maximum of sine of x is usually 1. For 2 sine x, it's going to be 2. So, it's going to get up to about there. I swear down people just wait until I'm filming lessons to ring. Sorry about that. Okay, so that goes across to 2. Forgot to label for there as well. And for good measure, let's put 180 there. And put, uh, that's why is 2 sine x. So that is our sketch of both graphs. Okay, then part 2. One says to find the exact coordinates of the point of intersection of the graphs, giving your answer in the form uh, arc tan alpha, sorry, arc tan a, uh, k root b, where a and b are integers and k is irrational. Okay, so. What we're looking for then are the coordinates at this point. I'm going to call this point P. So at P, the two graphs are equal. So for cos x is equal to 2 sine x. Now, usually you have to be very careful with dividing through by a trig function, but the reason for that is that in the interval you are in, that function might equal zero. Now we can clearly see at p cos does not equal zero. So we could say at p cos of x or for cos of x it's most important that cos of x does not equal zero. So we can divide by cos of x. So that's going to give us 4 is equal to 2 sine x over cos x. Now 
Now, sine x over cos x is tan x, so we can also divide through by 2, and we're going to get 2 is equal to tan x. So, x is the inverse tan or arc tan of 2. So that is the x coordinate. Okay, so now because they want the y coordinate in exact form, we can't just find the value of arctan2 for x and substitute that into either for cos x or to sin x. What we need to do now is realise that if tan of x is equal to 2, this means in a right angle triangle where this side down here is x, uh, angle, sorry, that angle down there is x. If tan of x is 2, then we know the opposite over the adjacent is equal to 2. So, we could say this length is 2 and the adjacent is 1. From that, we can work out the hypotenuse. So, the hypotenuse is uh, the square root of 2 squared and 1 squared. It's Pythagoras. So, h is root 5. So, we know, for example, that y is 2 sine of x. So, using our triangle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, 2 sine of x is equal to 2 times the opposite, so 2, over root 5, which is 4 over root 5. Remember though, they wanted this in the form k root b. So, we now need to rationalise the denominator. So, multiply top and bottom by root 5. So, we get 4 root 5 over 5. So, p has coordinates arc tan 2 and 4 root 5 over 5. Cool. Okay, then the final part for one mark. A student argues that without the condition x is between 0 and 180, all, um, all of the points of intersection it would occur uh, in intervals of 360 degrees because uh, both sine of x and cos of x are periodic functions with that period. We want to comment on the validity of the student's argument. So, remember what we just did? We turned 4 cos of x equals to sine of x into an equation to do with tan of x. Now, even if we just continued our graphs here, we can see there would be another solution there which isn't 360 degrees, but, so, 
what we can say, for part three, is that uh, points of intersection occur or points of intersection satisfy tan of x is equal to 2. Now the period of tan the period of tan of x is 180 degrees So, there are intersections uh, every 180 degrees, not 360. Go.